I'm here with David Boren, former governor, United States senator, and now the president of the University of Oklahoma. And he's written this wonderful new book called A Letter to America. Senator, why did you write this book, and, and why did you write it now? Well, Steve, you know, you have a lot of experiences, and uh, an experience that I had fairly recently, I think, was the final push to cause me to write this book. I was on a committee interviewing candidates for the Rhodes Scholarship, uh, these incredible, bright, young men and women. And then all of a sudden, I don't know why I asked the question, how long do you think the United States is going to remain a superpower? And, and you could tell he was wanting to say, well, forever. But he, he paused. The pause was so long it became uncomfortable. Finally, I said, surely you don't think it's going to be forever. And he was still silent. And then I said, well, you know, think about the fact that we're only 6% of the people in the world, we Americans. Uh, China and India, at the rate that they're growing, their economies, at least in gross terms, are going to match our own within the next 20, 25 years. Uh, but they have 10 times the number of people we have. They could become our military as well as our economic equal. And so I began to realize, you know, we as Americans are not talking about the things we need to talk about with each other in this country. We need to realize that it's not inevitable that we're always going to be a world leader. And we need to start talking about those things that are going to determine how long we're going to play that role in the world. So that really caused me to sit down and write this letter to the American people to say, we have great challenges out there. The clock is running. In your letter to America, you make a passionate appeal for bipartisanship. Why is that important to America today? One of the reasons that we're in trouble and that we could go into decline if we don't act is partisan polarization. World War II ends, and what's the first thing we do? We pass the Marshall Plan. And how smart that was. We, we realized that if we didn't rebuild, even Germany that had fought us, and Italy, and Western Europe, that those countries could be ripe to fall to communism. We taxed the American people, if you can believe it, to help rebuild those countries, some of whom had been fighting against us. Now, how in the world could that happen? If, if we had a situation like we had in politics today, can you imagine if one party proposed that? The other party would be out there running the 30-second attack ads. They're going to tax us to give money to the people that just killed our sons and daughters that fought us in a war? Would never happen. You write in the book about how America came together to win the Cold War, but you're concerned about America's stature in the world today. Right after 9-11, there were remarkable headlines around the world. For example, in Le Monde in Paris, there was this headline, we're today we're all Americans. There was a great reservoir of goodwill uh, to the United States. And all of a sudden, that's evaporated. The approval of the United States and our role in the world has dropped from the 80 and 90 percent level. It was above 90 percent in some countries like Britain and Australia right after 9-11 down to, I believe, the highest rating in any, in any recent poll has been in Britain, it was only 24%. How do we re-engage with the rest of the world and establish a positive relationship? Your book is very forward-looking and looking at the challenges that we face in the 21st century, but you think that history is an important guide, that we need to understand the past in order to address these problems. Why is history so important? Over 25% now Ivy League schools thought that the president has the right under our Constitution to suspend our Bill of Rights anytime he wants to. Now, how in the world can this country be what it must be in the years ahead if we have such a lack of knowledge of our own history? You know, Jefferson said it. If we don't have knowledge among our citizens, we won't be able to keep uh, this republic. We won't be able to keep this democracy. The quality of our leaders reflects the quality of the knowledge of our citizens and the participation of our citizens. I really hope that my letter to America, and that's what it is, it's not the politicians that are going to solve our problems, it's us. But we could do it. We've done it in the past. We can do it again. I've, I've dedicated this book to my students, to the next generation, because I think all of us should feel an intense feeling of obligation to them. We're stewards for their future. And that's one of the reasons why I've dedicated the profits from this book, if there are any profits, we hope there will be, to uh, scholarships here at the University of Oklahoma. I don't intend to keep any of the profits. And also to the OU Press, which has published this book, uh, to provide funds to help them publish additional books on American history. Because, as I said, we so badly need to know our history 
so that we can maintain our greatness.